بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد خاتم النبيين وإمام المرسلين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين طريق واحد ون واي قال أبو القاسم أبو القاسم سد الطرق كلها مسدودة على الخلق إلا من اقتفى أثر الرسول صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم واتبع سنته ولزم طريقته فإن طريق الخيرات كلها مفتوحة عليه كما قال تعالى لقد كان لكم في رسول الله إسوة حسنة So Abu Qasim says that all the ways, الطرق كلها مسدودة على الخلق that all the ways are closed, all the paths are closed uh, against the creation. إلا من اقتفى أثر الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم واتبع سنته except for the one who seeks the footsteps of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and follows in them. فإن طريق الخيرات كلها مفتوحة عليه for all the ways of good, all the paths of good are open for that person. كما قال تعالى لقد كان لكم في رسول الله إسوة or إسوة حسنة that it, in the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم there has been put a good example for you. A good, uh, a good uh, one to follow. So this particular uh, counsel of Imam al-Junaid in, in it he's saying that you cannot assume that anybody is worthy of following other than the Prophet wasallam, simply because, and that's, we're talking just individuals on, them, uh, on themselves. Uh, they're not to be followed. It's, at the end of the day, it's the Prophet wasallam that we follow. We do not have uh, a, a pope in Islam, for example, or uh, someone that we have deified or anything like that. Um, the Messenger Wasallam's function was to show us the way to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And if you reflect on this life, look at it like it's uh, it's uh, you're you're at night time right now, and you have no way for you to see anything. And there is one individual that has a lamp, and that lamp. Is showing him the way. Now there are multiple ways you can go. It just so happens that all the other ways will lead you to go off cliffs without you realizing it, to go into bushes and be attacked by uh, beasts and the beasts in the wild, or whatever. And you have one individual with that lamp showing you the way. Now that individual has surrounded himself with people who have who can take from his lamp. A little bit of light. He's got this torch and he's lighting up their torches from his torch. And they're following. And their torches only sustain themselves as long as they are with him. His torch is never ending. It continues to provide light. But their torches, if they go off on their own, they actually get put out. So as long as they follow this individual, they will continue as their torches kind of diminish their power. They just draw from it and they keep drawing and keep drawing and so that's where their power comes from that individual is the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's where we get our light the other individuals that he surrounded himself with are basically the 
Salaf, the companions, the, uh, the great Imams, and then the scholars that follow in that footstep. So the idea that you can surrender yourself completely to an individual and he has no basis in what he's saying and assuming that that would open the way for you just because that person makes you feel good or they say things in a way that's really nice and whatnot, that in itself is problematic. And so in this, in this sense, if you think about it, to be a true traditional Sufi, you know, and not to make any claims, but if you want to follow in that path so that you can attain this honorific title of being a Sufi, you actually have to be a Salafi to start off with. And when I say Salafi, this is a term that is uh, confused a little bit. When the Prophet ﷺ says in the hadith, عَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الْمَهْدِيِّينَ الرَّشِيدِينَ الْبَعْدِ And then when he says that the خَيْرُ الْقُرُونَ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ That the best of generations is my generation and the one that follows and the one that follows. We actually have to reflect on that hadith a little bit. What is he telling us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He's talking about the generation as a whole. What was the generation doing? Was the whole community, for example, in Medina, were they all mujtahidun? Were they all able to derive and interpret and get rulings from the Qur'an and the Sunnah? By consensus, everybody knows that that was not the case. So if we want to follow in the footsteps of the Salaf, what were the Salaf doing? They were actually implementing verses from the Qur'an that implore us to what? To ask the people of knowledge if we don't know. To have a group of our community dedicate their lives to seeking knowledge so that what? They can warn the rest of the community when they get back to them. It was not befitting for all of the Muslims to go out and, um, and uh, seek sacred knowledge in the way that unfortunately many Muslims today think that that's the way it needs to be. A community would not actually um, rise up and be a fully functioning community if everybody was doing exactly the same thing. So we have in our communities, we have a group that has dedicated their lives to, be, to becoming physicians. We have groups that have dedicated their lives to becoming engineers. We have a group that has dedicated their lives to becoming pilots and so on and so on. And so we have a group that has dedicated their lives to becoming scholars and to becoming students of knowledge. So in following the footsteps of the Salaf, so when I tell you that, and I, you know, it's, uh, it's the opinion that I feel makes the most sense to me and you're free to disagree. Um, but it, it just makes more sense that if you are not a full-fledged scholar who dedicates their lives to, you know, doing this and has the capacity and has been attested to, to being someone who can do their own ishtihad, then you just follow a school. I follow the Maliki school. You got, I have friends that follow the Shafri school, friends that follow the Hanbali school, friends that follow the Hanafi school. You just follow a school because there is a group of people that has basically dedicated their lives to that. Um, and that's what it means. You know, the Prophet ﷺ is talking about, he gave an analogy and he said, تَرَكْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْمَحَجَّةِ الْبَيْضَةِ I have left you on a clear white road. لَيْلُهَا كَنَهَارِهَا لَا يَزِيغُ عَنْهَا إِلَّا هَالِكَ That is day is as clear as its night and its night is as clear as its, its night is as clear as its day. It's completely clear. We don't have any issues here. And the only one who would deviate from it is one who's perished. Now mahajja in that hadith, mahajja, the word mahajja in Arabic is actually a term used to describe a wide road. And the analogy you can think of it if, uh, if you're from the States or uh, you know the I-5 goes on for like multi lanes, like sometimes it gets I think when I drove, it got to something like six or seven lanes at some point. So you have these multi-lanes, but they're all going in the same direction, and they all have kind of, at the end, they end in the same uh, destination. So you're going in these lanes, and you're going through. Islam, if you look at the schools of fiqh, the schools of jurisprudence, it's, it's these lanes. They're all going in the same direction. Nobody's going in the opposite direction. They're all heading the same way. They're just, one is taking this lane, the other is taking that lane, the other is taking that lane. And each lane has its own kind of qualities. Certain people drive on certain lanes and you'll find that they prefer to be on that particular lane as opposed to the other lane. And if you try to force all the cars in all of these lanes to start going in one lane, that's when you'll start having, causing havoc and accidents. So 
when Abu Qasim here says الطرق كلها مسدودة he's talking about uh, deviating paths paths that go in different directions paths that lead you in, in uh, to different destinations the destination is one we can have multiple lanes and so we follow in the footsteps of the Prophet وسلم, and we basically uphold to if you want to talk about a Sufi tariqa tariqas are like the spiritual paths if you think of uh, the schools of fiqh as uh, you know, there are different ways of interpreting the text, the same text in the same sunnah, and they all kind of arrive at the same conclusion generally. Turuq, the tariqa, the Sufi tariqas, the Sufi uh, uh, disciplines, you know, they have a shadiliya, naqshabandiya, and all that. They're like that. Now, unfortunately, though, you will find that for a lot of people, these turuq have gone astray in a lot of places. And it's not to insult the tariqa itself, but if you look at certain individuals that sit at the leadership of these tariqas and people that look up to them, they were not people who really spent time to study. A lot of times you'll find that they just inherited their position as the uh, leaders of that tariqa. The original founders of these tariq, they were not people that sought to make tariqas of themselves. They were righteous scholars that had dis disciples and their disciples just basically took some of their wisdoms and counsels and codified them and started uh, transmitting them. But at the end of the day, if something goes contrary, and again, we're talking here about something that has no basis, not that it doesn't agree with the interpretation that you uphold, we're talking about something that has no basis whatsoever. In Islam, then we'll just say in the Quran and the Sunnah, we'll just reject that, regardless of who espouses it. And that's really how to follow in the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ. Just know that the companions, radiallahu anhum, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud, Ibn Abdullah, Aisha, radiallahu anha, um, they all had different opinions in a lot of cases. And they, but that, they did not allow their differences to sow animosity between them. They just accepted that they disagreed. And they upheld if they disagreed that the other was wrong. They would tell us, I think you're wrong. But they didn't go further than that. They were still brothers in Islam. And so that's the idea here. Yeah, all the ways are closed for people except for the one who follows in the footsteps of the Messenger Wasallam. Now if you look at every school of fiqh, for example, if you dedicate some time to studying each school of fiqh, you'll find that each one has their proofs. Each one has their way of showing you how they're following in the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. And the differences are actually more minor than people make them to be. And that's really how you can be a true Salafi. In that you recognize your position. If you're a student of knowledge who's someone who's seeking all that stuff, then yeah, you will go further and investigate and do these things. But if you want to, if you if that's not your issue and you have other things that you're focusing on, like you're in med school or anything like that, and you just don't have the time to dedicate to seeking knowledge, then what do you do? You ask the scholars. You follow something established. And at the end of the day, you're going to be following someone. Reflect on how often you quote scholars. I repeat that. Reflect on how often you quote scholars. The question now becomes, who do you want to quote? Do you want to quote one or two or three individuals that are from modern times or from the past couple of hundred years? Or do you want to quote a whole school that had thousands of individuals? Each one of them was a, each one of them that has made it to this day of their works and, and their uh, it, and their efforts have made it to us means that they were sincere and they actually um, had uh, a great caliber of knowledge and they've been established in these schools and the Ummah has accepted these schools and so you know that you would be following something established and your probability of error is much smaller when you have that many scholars all in one school I mean that's that's the thing you need to reflect on at least for a lot of people that follow schools when they quote you they'll tell you the school of Imam so-and-so so we're talking not the Imam, we're talking about the school. All of these scholars have agreed on this conclusion, right? Or the majority have agreed on this conclusion. As opposed to this one scholar that I'm quoting you, he's quoting the Quran and he's explaining that verse to me in that way as he understands it. Something to think about. So that's really what it is. This path, when you're setting on the path, you're setting, you have to be in the forefront of your mind following in the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu and anything else will be closed upon you. It is not for you to follow your own hawa, your own whim, or someone else's whim. 
It's about following something established. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ya shal jundika an tuqanni ta'asiyan. حاشا لجودك أن تقنط عاصيا الفضل أجزل والمواهب أوسعون